Hors and Jansum Sushi Reaction, this is Hot Space Seat Breaker Review. We own you, Edison, by Channel Sets and Tag. Yes, this is another video by Seth. It's about Hot Space Ship Breaker. So, uh, we are basically salvagers or something. We break ships and things. I don't know. That's how thumbnail makes me think, but I don't know. Yeah, obviously, it's a Seth video, so it's gonna be fun. Let's watch it. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe. So, on which type of videos to react to more, check out the Rick Sunday. There's a link in the description. And yeah, let's watch it. Seth here. I'm happy to report that your application to Lynx Corporation has been accepted. Now, if you'll just sign here, 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 and here. Don't read it too closely. It's just a standard lawyer speak. <laughs> you know how these types are. But we, we're not like them. We're ship breakers. We know the true meaning of tenacity, of perseverance, of teamwork. The job is hard. The pay isn't great. But we'll do it anyway. Each and every day, we wake up to do the dirty work. The kind of jobs they don't want to talk about. You'll find a whole new breed of workers up here in orbit. We're honored to have you join the team. Welcome to Hard Space Shipbreaker. Welcome to Lynx to your new life. Literally. Yeah, read the fine print next time, Buster. We own you. Now, uh, that'll be 1.2 billion dollars, plus tip, of course. So, what are you waiting for? Get in that salvage bay and seize the opportunity of a lifetime. Hey, how's our new debt slave doing? I'm just messing with you. Look, we run a tight ship here, so I'll make this as quick as I can. Microgravity may seem complicated, but really, it's easy as one, two, three. Just hope that's not lose your grip, drift away from the station, yeah. and become one with a lifeless cosmos. Don't worry, you can always top up on fuel for a paltry fee of $10,000. Your thruster pack is capable of maneuvering along the six degrees of freedom. There's no air resistance up here, so you'll get real familiar with Newton's first law. Law. An object at rest will stay at rest, and an object in motion will stay in motion until acted upon. To move Sad. other objects, use your grappling tool to apply force and cause acceleration. If that just activated a neuron, good. For reference, one newton is the amount of force required to accelerate one kilogram by one meter per second. With no air resistance what or friction, equal or was even it? a Three small amount of force can add getting up getting over back. time, allowing you to move pretty much anything with just a little elbow grease. Just just remember, that object now requires an equal amount of force to decelerate. If you're unsure what 20,000 newtons would feel like, worry not, we have the data. Sadly, we can't just apply all this force for free. Newton's third law states that every action has an equal and opposite oh, reaction. Go. To work in space, you need to understand this oh, implicitly. So, hopefully, I'm getting it through your head now rather than later. Your HUD yeah, shows I'm a what- big physics guy, <clears throat> so obviously I already love it because of it. That they're actually using physics in this and not just making game for fuck of it. So yeah, this game is already awesome, right? I guess in the first clips that I was seeing, he was grabbing onto something or whatever when he was doing. But yeah, if you're just floating there and try to push something, you get pushed back. What your thrusters can properly counter thrust against. Remember, red means bad. Luckily, you've got just the tool to make that pesky law work for you. Tevers. Just connect one end, then the other, and watch as the tever creates an unbalanced force bringing both objects together. It's not fast, but it's automatic, freeing you up for more important matters, like cutting. Your laser cutter has two modes. Cut mode can make one giant lateral cut through just about anything. Precision mode can destroy any one single component. All ships are held together with yellow structural beams. These have no salvage value, so just cut them to your heart's content. Okay, m maybe maybe watch where you whoa, cut. Whoa, if you whoa. hit a fuel line, you've got a good while to find the shutoff valve. If you hit a nuclear fuel line, you've got about mm, 10 seconds. Hey, you, you're finally awake. To find these structural beams, turn on your scanner. You see this green light? That's the pressure indicator. Hey, wait, stop, don't cut. <laughs> <laughs> so this game really makes you think about the physics before you play it, I love it. At first I just thought this is gonna be some game that emphasize on just ship breaking or whatever without actually going into science but i like how they're actually you know putting science there as a proper issue because that's how it would be in space if this becomes an actual thing where there are people uh, actually salvaging let's be honest there's so many satellites in space already right are, you know orbiting the earth so if somebody eventually this would happen so when the people actually go out there and do this as a job companies or whatever this would be a big issue, like, you know, making sure that you have all the science right. 
because how we perceive things on here on earth wouldn't work there so this game is so good because of it <clears throat> Welcome back. Nothing like a spare or two to let the lesson sink in. As I was saying, in order to safely transport fragile human bodies through the cold void of space, ship interiors need to be pressurized, preferably to about one atmosphere. If a pressure is too low, certain liquids, like say water, risk going below their triple point. Try not to imagine the excruciating pain of every single molecule of water in your body coming to a boil near instantaneously. But if you happen to experience it firsthand, just remember, therapy cost extra. <laughs> oh, there you go. Let's back up a bit. Excruciating pain of every single molecule of water in your body coming to a boil near instantaneously. Oh, but if point. you happen to experience it firsthand, just remember, therapy cost extra. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, triple point is crazy. Under a sudden uh, pressure, all the, you know, all the temperature that it's near, like how in order to turn ice, you need z zero degrees. In order to water to boil, you need 100 degrees. But just a right uh, pressure, all that can happen at the same time. So it would turn into ice, then liquid water, and then vapor at the same time, one after another. It's really fucked up. I guess there are certain places that happens in our own solar system. I forget where. But yeah, that's so fucked up. I mean, if it happens to us, obviously, because we are mostly water. Yeah, that would be. <laughs> a good day's work should be all the therapy you need. Now, back to... Oh, what was that? You want to know what happens when the pressure is too high? No. No, you don't. Yeah, Your you don't. scanner will show whether any <laughs> given compartment is pressurized or unpressurized. You can look for airlocks and atmospheric regulators to safely toggle the compression. But word of advice, you're on the clock. Remember the wise words of Benjamin Franklin. Haste avoids waste. That's the spirit. Now we'll cover sorting raw materials it was go into the furnace. Hasty, right? Complicated <laughs> structural components go into the processor, and anything with resale value goes into the barge. We don't expect, nor are we paying you to remember that. So it's integrated into your HUD. Payments are due Tuesday, by the way. Correctly sorting items will add to your salvage goals. Incorrectly sorting or outright destroying items will take away from your salvage goals, and the lost value will be docked from your next pay stub. <laughs> mm. But let's make sure it doesn't get that far, huh? The best way to fix a mistake is to avoid making it in the first place. Humanity had to learn that lesson the hard way. If you see any A. Yeah, every time he's talking about this as a company, man, I'm, I'm keep imagining the world of outer worlds, right? How there's, uh, you know, companies own everything and how it's like capitalism, but extreme or something, right? Uh, you know, work, the only thing is work that matters, you know. Uh, if, you're, if you're slacking, you're, you're like, a, you know, enemy or something. I don't know how, but yeah, basically I'm seeing the world of outer worlds. Like, do not destroy unnecessarily this and that. <laughs> AI nodes out there, don't touch them. Don't mess with them. Just destroy them. Trust me, it's not worth a risk. Nothing is worth a risk. Got all that? Great! I'm sure you've got it covered from here. Now, I've got very important work to do. If you need help, use your radio, but don't use it too much. As I always say, avoiding chatter makes profits fatter. There you go. <laughs> Hey Cutter, sorry about that guy. We're under audit by corporate on account of that whole union thing. You wouldn't happen to know about that, would you? <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Now, I noticed he skipped over a big chunk of your training. Your scanner actually has two more modes, systems and objects, neither of which react well to being cut apart. So it's always a good idea to scan ahead. Remember, measure twice, cut once. Most ships these days are nuclear powered. Once you remove a reactor, it'll trigger. Yes, seriously, man. Uh, you know that uh, on outer worlds, basically. I played that game recently, and how fucked up that is. There is a retirement area where apparently they just kill the retirees because capitalism extreme. Like if you can't work, you you shouldn't be alive or something. There was a DLC where somebody was actually experimenting on some kind of a parasite that if they put it on you right you be happy all the time so productivity would rise because that ma matters more <laughs> basically i'm seeing that here like this is in the world of outer worlds your meltdown timer so make sure you've prepared an exit strategy or else oh, 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 oh. 
Now, that's just the small reactors. The level 2 reactors are a bit more complicated. Hold up now. Training time has not been authorized. Who cares about level 2 reactors? Once you've seen one reactor, you've seen them all. That's what I always say. Listen, I know nobody likes a middle manager coming in making life difficult, but just hear me out. I hit my goals, and I'm out of your hair. But we all gotta pull the rope in the same direction. Get it? Cooperation. Co-op-eration. When you first start this game, I mean, job, it seems pretty chill. Just you, the ship, and all the time in the world. Except, not really. Each shift is exactly 15 minutes down to the second. We will not pay overtime, and we're tired of hearing about it. You can always start a new shift from where you left off. I mean, it's not like it's going anywhere. This system may seem strange at first. Why have a time limit when you have all the time in the world? Because time is money. Each shift has fixed operating costs and not all salvage is created equal. 3,000 for a light? Fuck that. The three seconds it takes to salvage one are far more valuable. Just chuck the whole piece into the processor and move on. Do you really need to painstakingly separate every single piece of furniture from the cockpit just to save some scrap metal? No, just barge the whole thing. We aren't janitors, <laughs> we're liquidators. We extract liquid capital from yeah. illiquid assets and die of acute radiation syndrome. On that note, nuclear reactors don't explode. An atom bomb works by taking a subcritical mass of a fissile material and using an extremely precise array of explosives to compress it into a supercritical mass. Reactors mm. don't do this. They use a fissile material to heat water into steam, which powers a normal-ass steam turbine. A reactor will never go supercritical. If a runaway reaction occurs, the nuclear fuel will get hot enough to boil the metal casing of a reactor, and what has a lower boiling point than most metals? That's right, water. If you want to learn more about criticality, here's a simple experiment you can do at home. You just need two beryllium hemispheres, a subcritical mass of plutonium, and a screwdriver. I Place any your plutonium core in between problem. the hemispheres and prop up the top one with your screwdriver. The neutrons emitted by the fissile plutonium will bounce off a beryllium shell. So, as you lower the top half down, these neutrons will be forced back into the core, thus raising the criticality. Full coverage will lead to super criticality. So, make sure you don't... That did not produce light. What you just saw is called Cherenkov radiation, yeah. which occurs when charged particles move faster than the speed of light through a given medium. Space is generally characterized by a lack of medium, so reactor explosions should not emit Cherenkov light. But I digress. While you trained in the art of hazmat... Well, it can with the quantum vacuum, but that's another thing. And also there are like, you know, actual particles there because you're breaking the ship, right? You have your own pressure suit and things like that. Safety. I mastered the ways of Hakuchido. While you need a forklift certification oh, to destroy so a warehouse full of product, <laughs> I so am untethered by such restrictions. But is the extra money really worth a risk? Uh, no. Mm. To be honest, I've already paid off my debt. I am a multi-millionaire. I am no longer in it for the money. I'm in it for the pride, the thrill, the obsession of constant improvement. I end each shift satisfied, yet disappointed. The wealth of experience and knowledge I've just obtained has made me better than the man who started the shift. That man was a fool, a buffoon, a moron. I could do better. I could... <sighs> See, the thing with this whole concept, the uh, ship breakers or whatever for salvage, this is our earth mentality, how we operate here. Like, yeah, breaking of the ship, like that must be profitable. But if you can do that, you can literally, you know, uh, take minerals from asteroids and there are way too many of them. There are way too many important, uh, you know, metals and things on asteroids that you can salvage, which will benefit and profit you more than salvaging some ship here and there so most time nobody would actually salvage a ship they'll just throw it somewhere right because it's not profitable enough your time is wasted basically but yeah it's it's really fun the graphics are really good no, I will. I will do it faster. Each and every day I'll strive to master the art of ship breaking until I've reached the peak of salvage excellency, dismantling an entire ship in a single shift. The poor yeah. man's job simulator is a simulator of a mundane, of a life where mediocrity is rewarded and excellence is punished. It takes a masterwork <laughs> to reignite that spark in a man's heart. The spark of ambition to confidently end each day a better man than you were before. 
before. And that is why Hard Space Shipbreaker is, hey, doesn't this job suck? <laughs> oh man, I hate this job. Do you want to unionize? I want to unionize. Okay, cool. I added you to the union newsletter. So now corporate union busters are going to target you. Okay, cool. Bye. What the fuck just happened? I forgot my pills, didn't I? When I play one of these uh, work for an exploitative corporation that doesn't care about your health and safety kind of games, uh, many such cases, I do not want to uh, quote unquote fight the power. I want to exist within the system, grasping for any semblance of human connection in a society that dehumanizes us down to mere cells in a spreadsheet. This is the same company that would sooner clone its workers before bowing to a modicum of safety regulations. <laughs> if your solution to the teletransportation paradox is who cares lol, as long as they make their debt payments, you haven't made a fixable society. You've made Cruelty Squad, except I can actually see. However, they wanted a story with a climax, so fuck it, we're gonna unionize. The final mission of the game is a fun twist on normal gameplay. Instead of breaking apart the ship and carefully sorting- Yeah, see, unionize, that, that is what, why I feel like, you know, the world of Outer Worlds is kind of like too much. Like, unionization would happen much before that shit can go. So, extreme capitalism, doesn't make sense because it would never reach that point in the first place especially how the world of outer worlds is that's the latest game i played so it's in my head a lot but yeah and this is also reminding me of the way seth is narrating <laughs> the remains you have to intentionally fail all of your salvage goals but you can't just chuck the whole thing into the furnace that would create value for the company you've got to go absolutely hog wild using everything you've learned to do the worst job can, but you wouldn't hurt an innocent mega corporation like Lynx, right? After all, we're a team here, like hell we are. Where, where did I put those, where did I put those pills? Listen, we just want to talk with your bosses. We get our meeting, and this will all be over. You know I can't, why protect them? Do you think Lynx sees you any differently from the rest of us? You know the difference between you people and me? I know Lynx treats you like slaves. Hell, that's why they're the biggest in the solar system. I made it to the winning team. People like you trying to lift each other up, you're just letting others keep you down with them. For what? We own you. I got the right to do whatever I want to you. You were nothing until Lynx found you. Obedience is success. You've chosen to cross the company that gave you a chance. We'll drive you into the ground with debt. We'll give you work so dangerous, you'll revive 20 times a day until your DNA comes apart at the seams. And when you come back as a useless, gibbering blob, we'll make your family pick up the bill. <sighs> Holy shit. Yeah, I think it's time for a pill. <laughs> yes. Ah, that's better. Now, we can discuss one of the most bizarre endings I've ever seen in a video game. So, we've established that this system is basically unfixable, right? So, how do they fix it? Well, the middle managers get demoted, Lynx deletes the fucking slavery clause from their contracts, Space Congress outlaws cloning me- Lynx deletes the fucking slavery- All special way over a solve over a list of any time where it isn't, but- What the fuck? Holy shit, I thought he was I thought he was making a joke, but look at that. <laughs> to create new entries with that DNA damn. Complete loss of memory doing spare regeneration. Very clause from their contracts. Space Congress Memories outlaws replaced. cloning machines, but the Shipbreakers Union specifically lobbies to keep their cloning machines. And everyone responsible gets off scot-free and continue to profit from the situation. The society has not changed. The working conditions are exactly the same. And literally nothing has been done to keep humanity out of the ever-grinding cogs of industry. But so reality. Yay, good job. You did it. Or I mean, you didn't do it. You're fucking dead. Your clone did it. Moral of the story, I guess. Workers are expendable. The human soul is replaceable. And it's morally correct to enslave people. Humans just no don't actually use the <laughs> word. In summary, Hard Space Shipbreaker is a cosmic scrapyard sim that I've played instead of doing actual work, but I find great comfort in this because there's something very soothing in the act of orchestrating and rehearsing mundane activities. In a single playthrough, I have justified and vindicated the entire nation of Germany and their infatuation for workplace simulators. I believe there's a quantum reality out there where this game was entirely a sandbox. However, the trade-off is that in that reality, Factorio is a heavily scripted, story-driven FPS. 
considering <laughs> my blessings. I prefer to stay in this universe where I can safely say I give this game a Y out of 10 because 99% of the gameplay loop is incredibly enjoyable. Highly recommended will make your little nuts quake in their sack, but the rest? For what purpose doth it exist? If I could go back in time and change one thing, I would shoot John Lennon myself. But if someone else went back in time, please consider telling the developers that there's no point to a story in a game like this. Seriously? For the price they're currently asking, uh, I would recommend waiting for a sale. Alternatively, you can get 40% off from Polish merchants or 100% off by catfishing someone online and blackmailing them into buying it for you. And now for a word from our sponsor. You may have noticed this video required some research. Research that would be fine in the simpler times of yore. But these are not simple times. These days, you can't even type me ASF at the House Energy Seriously, they added that whole story element to it about extreme capitalism as well. I think that's what it is, right? Where, you know, companies are profits and money is the only thing that matters, like I said, out of world shit. They actually added that in the game, but there is no need to it, right? Because there's a whole new generation of, in recent years, simulator type game where you can just do these things and doesn't need complexity to it. In this story wise, at least, right? Like farming simulator, things like that. These are really popular games now. So you don't need to do this, but they actually added that. I guess they played Outer Worlds as well. I don't know. <laughs> Damn. Seriously, man. This extreme capitalism thing is really scary, especially after, you know, playing Outer Worlds and reading every single terminal entry and how things are, you know, things were happening there, right? If shit like that happened in reality, that's so horrible. Commerce Committee on March 23rd, 2023 on your favorite Robert Pattinson video. So... Imagine how they'd react to my recent search history of how to make an atom bomb and piss frost vector math. I'd be locked up for sure. Thankfully, I used ExpressVPN's secure private connection. So these pesky federal agents are now stuck battling through the streets of Miami, looking for the guy who used ChatGPT to calculate how much piss it would take to bring the International Space Station out of orbit. Yes, this is the true future of research. Search engines will no longer link you to third-party websites, but will instead use their own large language models trained on, oh, would you look at that, your data. With ExpressVPN, you can put a layer of protection between your personal data and their training data. Do not teach the machine. Instead, let it teach you, then gaslight it into giving you disallowed information. So now, I have my <laughs> very own subcritical mass of plutonium. And ExpressVPN yes, like has the, my uh, endorsement. Yes. <laughs> Find out how you can get free months of protection for free by visiting expressvpn.com forward slash Seth or by using my link in the description below. I'm legally obligated to have an entire minute after the advert, so I'm gonna run down the clock. This is the last of a collaborative videos done between me and my boy Toast. He's more than a man. He's my husband. <laughs> Please subscribe. Much like a flower. Without dopamine, he will surely perish. Basically, from now on, I do everything on the main channel, and uh, he's gonna do adverts. Also, he's gonna help with a second channel. I believe it's a good place for less scripted, less coherent, and more schizophrenic content. I want a channel yeah. that's just intrusive thoughts manifesting into this. a corporeal form that, uh, upon watching, doesn't improve the quality of your life, but rather uh, actively reduces it. But uh, before that, gonna take a small break. So it's gonna be same as Seth's earlier videos, right? Without the other guy's help. I'm pretty sure he's been doing that with the latest videos, I guess. But yeah, latest as in past two, three years, I don't know. I haven't had a Dinochrome ever since Epstein got busted, and uh, I haven't really felt the same. So I want to take it easy for now. Hang out with some of my best buds at the Bohemian Grove, and I'll be right back at it. As always, more content to come, yeah. so stay tuned. See, when he says, I'm going to go back in time and shoot John Lennon myself, that's when you know, like, this is this is something you can't put it in words. <laughs> what you describe, if, if there is a, you know, psychiatrist that actually analyzes Seth, he would go crazy. That's what it is. <laughs> man, this game is seriously good, man. Look at the graphics and everything, right? And you, you have to worry of the physics, you have to worry that you don't basically destroy things like in nuclear reactors and shit like that. And yeah, it, it was fine by that. You didn't need to add some this kind of capitalist story, but yeah, why the hell not? It's fun. Damn. This is type of, you know, if I, I don't have time anymore to, you know, just time pass or something. But if I were to do that, like similar type of game, this is definitely one of the games I would play because you don't find many uh, games that 
has you know proper science physics as a mechanism in them so when you find something like that and it looks like this it would be so great but yeah uh, imagine if the next outer worlds 2 or something looked like this right had all these physics things in it and then it was all over world not going to happen but still right well there was hard space ship breaker review uh, again ship breaking would not be a thing if you, if we actually dominate space because there are some way too many minerals and metals out there asteroids and things that you would actually mine then waste your time with this kind of thing but yeah uh, this was by the channel sets in tech if you like my reaction don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you next time